أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاه والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء خصوصا على افضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الامين وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الف لام م ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل لقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى امين يا رب العالمين As I told you in the introductory lecture, we are now beginning with the first grouping of the surahs. The Makki surah was Surah Al-Fatiha, which we have already studied. Now the Madani part of this first group consists of four surahs, and consisting of two pairs of two surahs each. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Ali Imran, they are a pair. And that is evident from the fact that both start with the letters Alif Lam Mim. Then Surah Al Nisa, Surah Al Maida, they are a pair. They start straight off. Ya yuhal ladina amanu, ya yuhal nas. This is how Surah Al Nisa and Surah Al Maida start. So this is the first pair of the Madani surahs. Now regarding Surah Al Baqarah, please note. This is the largest and the biggest surah of the Quran. It comprises nearly two and a half parts. It has 286 ayat, divided into 40 rukus. And this surah al-Mubarakah, not only regarding its size, it's one of the most important surahs of the Quran. Rather, I should say, the most important surah of the Quran, because. It has been said so by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself. There's a hadith in which he said, "Le kull shayin salamun, wa salamu salamul Quran surah al Baqarah." Everything has its top, highest place, and we may say every phenomenon has a climax, and the top or the climax of Quran is surah al Baqarah. Now these are the wordings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This surah, I have given it a name, Surah Al-Ummatain, Surah of Two Ummas. The two Ummas, that is the present Muslim Ummah, that is the Muslims, and the former Muslim Ummah, the Bani Israel. This surah can be divided, just as we. Listen to the Hadith of Qudsi. Asam tu salat abeni wa bani abdi nisfain. Surah Al Fatiha divisible into two absolutely equal parts. Here again we have nearly equal parts, halves of Surah Al Baqarah. First part 
that comprises of 18 rukus and 152 ayat. Here, the address is basically to the former Muslim Ummah, that is Bani Israel. Out of the 18 rukus, more than 10, you know, they are in direct address, Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati allati yadamtu alaykum wafu bi'ahdi yufi bi'ahdikum wa iyaya farhamun. This is the beginning of the fifth section, fifth ruku of this surah. And in the fifteenth section again, Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati allati yadamtu alaykum wa alni faddaltukum ala al-alameen. It's a continuous address to the former Muslim Ummah. In the first four rukus, they are some preliminary discussions, and as we shall see, inshallah, very soon, actually they are a summary of the whole of the Makki Quran. Because two-thirds of the Quran had been revealed already when Surah Al-Baqarah was being revealed. It is Madani Surah. And this is the first Madani Surah. The time of its revelation is beginning with the Hijra till the time just before Ghazmat al-Badr. So that is actually about 16 or 17 months. This surah was revealed bit by bit, part by part, during 16 or 17 months, extending from just after Hijrah to just before Azmat al-Badr, the Battle of Badr. So this is the first Badri surah that way. But two-thirds of the Quran had already been revealed. That is the Makki surahs. So actually, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed this surah in the very beginning of the Qur'an. A gist and a summary of the teachings of the Makki Qur'an is given in four rukus in the very beginning of this surah. Then the four remaining rukus of this first part, they are tahwili, because you will find that the change in the direction of Tibla from Jerusalem to Makkah, that is discussed in those four rukus. And that was actually a symbol that the position that was held by the former Muslim Ummah, Bani Israel, for 2,000 years, now they are deposed from that position. They were the representatives of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth for 2,000 long years. Now they are deposed, and the new Muslim Ummah, based on the prophethood of and messengerhood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now this has taken the place this, this, this new Ummah, it is being installed in place of the former Muslim Ummah. That is why the direction of the Qibla that is changed from Jerusalem to Makkah. Then the second part, second half of this Surah, it comprises of 22 Rukus, but the number of Ayat is 134. In the first part, 18 Rukus, but Ayat 152. In the second half, although the Rukus number is greater, 22, but the number of the ayat, 134. So actually they go to balance each other, and that is how I'm saying that they nearly balanced half, half and half, you know. The, this division is nearly balanced. In that second portion, the address is to the Muslim Ummah exclusively. And two subjects are being discussed. Number one, the Sharia, because the Sharia is revealed after Hijrah. Before Hijrah, there was no Sharia actually, no law. Nothing had been made first except, you know, Salah. And that was also made first only a year or so before Hijrah. There was no Zakah, there was no Psalm. There was, nothing was declared Haram. You know, neither, you know, liquor was declared Haram, nor interest was declared Haram. No Sharia. So Sharia actually was revealed in the Madani Surahs. And in Surah Al-Baqarah we find the blueprint, the basic principles, the blueprint of the Sharia of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this goes to develop into Surah Al-Nisa, and then final, actually, final Sharia has taken the form, the Sharia of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Surah Al-Ma'idah. So actually, the legal, the legal injunctions of the Qur'an, and secondly, Jihad Fi Sabirillah, Infaq Fi Sabirillah, Tatal Fi Sabirillah. These are the two subjects discussed in the second half of this Surah, and there it's the address to the present Muslim Ummah. Now, with this introduction, brief introduction, we start. The first two rukus of this surah are very important. If we keep it view, as I told you, Tawilul Khas, when they were revealed, what was meant and what was understood basically, 
by these wordings, by these ayat, when they were revealed at that time. And then we shall have the generalized view that if we just leaving away the, the historical background, if we, if we focus our attention on the wordings, then the generalized inferences, then we shall discuss about them. Alif Lam Meem, these are the isolated letters of the Qur'an which appear in the beginning of 29 surahs of the Qur'an. In three surahs only single letter comes, Qaf, Noon, Qaf wal Qur'an al-Majid, Noon wal Qalam wa ma yasturoon, Saad wal Qur'an al zikr Then in some there are two letters, Ha, Meem, Ta, Ha, Yaseen. In some there are three letters, Alif, Lam, Meem, Alif, Lam, Ra. And in some there are four letters, Alif, Lam, Meem, Ra, Alif, Lam, Meem, Saad. And only two, there are five. Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Saad, Ha, Meem, Ain, Seen, Kaf. And the meanings of these letters nobody knows. They are a secret between Allah and His Messenger. Although much has been said about these letters. But the consensus, general consensus is that nobody knows the real meanings with sure. There are certain judgments people have guess something, but nothing definite. You can't be sure of those meanings. Zalikal kitab bafi. This is the book of Allah. Al kitab. This is the book. What does it mean? The book of Allah. La rai bafi. There's no doubt in it. No doubt in it about its being revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then there is no doubt in its contents. Its contents are also above doubt. And its revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also above doubt. Hudal lil muttaqeen. This is the guidance for the God-fearing. But I discussed this word taqwa in my Sunday lecture. Taqwa, you know, although generally piety, godliness, holiness, different words are used, but actually meanings are to save yourself. Muttaqeen, people who want to save themselves. Since what? From what? From the fire of hell, number one. Displeasure of Allah, number two. And basically, they have a moral sense within them. And they want to avoid and save themselves from evil. If this moral sense is active within them, then actually they will always be in search of the truth. In search of what we shall do. Those people who had given those, you know, who had prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, اِهْدِنَ السِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ عَنَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمِ It was their desire. It was their own search. They wanted to have the guidance. Now, actually, this is the relationship between Surah Al-Fatiha and Surah Al-Baqarah. You ask for guidance, هُدَلْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This is the guidance. The guidance is being given to you. And these are the do's and do's. Do these things and don't do these things. Go this way. Don't go this way. There is danger this way. This is the safety. This way you are safe. So actually this guidance is given here for the lil muttaqeen. But as I discussed in that lecture, although we find in the 23rd section of this very surah, for the lil nas, this has the guidance for all humanity. But you know only those people will be able to avail of his guidance who have in themselves the search for truth and guidance, who want to have guidance. People do, who don't want to have any guidance, they will not be able to avail themselves of the guidance that Quran is giving. If somebody is not hungry, he will not, you know, look towards any food. This, that food might be very nourishing and very tasty, but he has no hunger. He can't take it. So actually there should be a hunger. Then only you know what food is and how valuable it is, how much I need it. That is actually... The need for guidance is taqwa, because you want to save yourself from going astray. You want to save yourself from evils. You want to save yourself from doom on the doomsday. If that desire is there only, then you will be able to avail of the guidance of the Qur'an. And who are those muttaqeen? Al-lazina yuminuna bil ghayb. Those who believe in the unseen who know that the reality lies beyond the realm of our senses. Our senses, you know, they are very limited. And the real, the, all, the basic realities, they lie beyond. 
just as Confucius, you know, a very famous thinker of China, he has been reported to have said, there's nothing more real than what cannot be seen, and that, that there is nothing more certain than what cannot be heard. Things which are not visible by three, these eyes, which cannot be heard through these ears, they are the most real things. Actually, what we have this within the realm of our senses, this is a very shallow, superficial part of reality. So this is the basic thing that if somebody, he denies, no, there's nothing beyond our perception, then he will not be able to avail of the guidance of this Quran. Only such a person who understands, who knows that our senses, these, you know, they can reach, but to, very, to a very li limited extent. The reality lies beyond it. يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ And then they establish prayers. Because that reality, the Al-Haqq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now you should have some contact with Him, some communication with Him. And to have a regular communication with Him, you must establish prayers. وَبِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And whatsoever we have given them, they spend out of it. Spend out for charity for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the, for the spreading of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for making the deen of Allah supreme. And those who believe in what has been revealed and sent down to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and not only you, but they believe also on what was sent before. They believe in Torah also, they believe in Injil also, they believe in Zabur also, and they believe that the Prophets have been given these revelations and guidances before Qur'an also. Here you know we find the word is changed. Not yumenun, but yukenun. About the hereafter they are convinced, they are sure. They are sure that this life is not all human life. The real human life is in the hereafter. Death is not the end of our existence. It's just the gate towards the eternity. Because after death, you know, there is going to be resurrection. And after that resurrection, It's eternity. Eternal existence. So actually death is the gate to eternity. Actually they have, they are, they are convinced, they have the yaqeen. وَبِالْآخِرَةِهُمْ يُوْقِنُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدَمْ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ This Allah is very important here. These are the people who are on the guidance from their Lord. They are already on the guidance. And they will be increased in their guidance. But they are already in the guidance. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفِحُونَ And they are the people who will be successful, who will reach their final goal. That is falah. Now please note here, what these ayat denote is that because Quran was being revealed for the last twelve years before the revelation of these ayat, there were people who had taken the guidance of Quran. They were transformed, their characters, their sirah. They have been, you know, and they were practically present. These ayat are practically pointing towards those people. They are the people. There is Abu Bakr. Look to him. He is the fruit of this Quran. You know, every, every tree is known by the fruit it bears. The guidance of this Quran has produced a, a jamaah, a group, a community of people. Like Abu Bakr, Omar, Osman, Talha, Zubair. Go and see. They are the people who have benefited themselves with the guidance from the guidance of this Quran. And the Quran, you know, has produced a certain community who have these characters, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَالْيُقِيبُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُذِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُذِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَتِهُمْ يُوْقِنُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So this is actually the Taweel al-Khas. When these ayat were revealed, as if these ayat were pointing towards the people whom Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had prepared by the hard work of twelve years, their training, their tazkiyah, their tarbiyah, and through this, the teaching of this Qur'an, يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ The teaching of this Qur'an and hikmah has produced a, a people, a community. And these are these people 
who, whose qualities and attributes are given here. But if you infer generally, what will be the inference? If anybody wants actually to avail of the guidance of the Qur'an, he must take to this path first. He must produce in himself the qualities that are being given here, as if they are the precondition to avail the guidance of the Qur'an. If you want to tread on the path that Qur'an wants you to tread, these are the fundamental conditions, rather we should say preconditions, that you have to fulfill in order to avail yourself fully with the guidance of the Qur'an. Now the second group. Three types of people are discussed in these two rukus. Second, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاؤُنَ عَلَيْهِمْ عَنْزَرْتَهُمْ أَمْلَمْ تُنْزِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ خَتَمْ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَبْصَارِهِمْ غِشَابَةً وَلَا هُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Verily those people who have denied, who have decided to be kuffar, to deny, سَوَاؤُنْ عَلَيْهِمْ For them it's equal. أَنْزَرْتَهُمْ whether you, you, you warn them, am lam tunzirhum, or you don't warn them. La yumenun, they are not going to believe. Now actually, here also Quran is pointing towards certain people. This is not general. So many people were kuffar, had not become Muslims, till these ayat were revealed, and they became Muslims later on. So it cannot be a generalized meaning. Actually, it's a particular group. Those people whom Muhammad Sallallahu had preached for 12 years at Makkah, and they had understood the message of the Qur'an, and from the depths of their heart they believed that this is correct, but they didn't want to accept it due to their haughtiness, due to their takabbur, due to their hurur, because, you know, they were proud. They didn't want to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why should we follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Are we inferior to Muhammad? No. Then you know this is actually when they had decided, Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is equal. It's equally fruitless or equally without any result. Whether you preach them anymore, whether you go on warm, warming, warning them anymore, or you stop preaching to them or, and warning them. La yumenun, they are not going to believe. They have decided to remain kafir. They will not accept you. Khatam Allahu ala qulubihim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a seal on their hearts. Wa ala samihim. And on their ears, their hearing. Wa ala absarihim gishawa. And on their eyes, there is a curtain. There is covering on their eyes. Wa lahum azabun azim. And for them is waiting a very big torment. Now this again, please note, those people to whom preaching was done, the message of Quran had been conveyed to them year after year. Twelve years, Muhammad took Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at Makkah. Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab. It is not that they didn't, they didn't understand. They understood. Quran was in their own language. And they knew Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the very birth. Abu Lahab at least knew him from his very birth. But you know, they had decided not to accept him. Due to their haughtiness, their proudness. So actually now such people, they will not avail of your guidance. They will not avail of the guidance of the Quran. They will not benefit, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from your preaching, from your warning. So it's equal to them. And because due to their refusal, to accept the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had punished them by putting a seal on their hearts. This seal is not in the beginning. This seal is put only when somebody refrains from accepting the truth. Recognizing the truth that this is true, his heart tells him this is true, accept it, and he doesn't accept. Why? Because of proudness, or because of certain such reasons, haughtiness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as a punishment puts his seal on his heart. Now he cannot see because there is a curtain before their eyes. They cannot hear because their hearing is also sealed. And now their hearts are closed to for any guidance. Wamin and Nas, now the third degree, third type of people. Wamin and Nas, Amanna Billahi wa Bil Yomil Akhir wa Bahum bi 
and there are from among people who say with their tongues, with their mouths, Amanna Billah, we believe in Allah, wa bil yawmil akhir, and the last day, the day of judgment, wa ma hum bi mu'mineen, and they are not mu'min, they are not real believers. They profess to believe, they claim to believe, they say with loud words, we believe in Allah, we believe in the hereafter, in the day of judgment, but they are not believers. Now who are they? First of all, please note, they are actually two categories who are being referred here without giving them any name. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given them any title. But as far as we can understand, there are two types of people who are being discussed here. Generally people think that they are only munafiqeen, the hypocrites. But actually hypocrites as well as the Jews of Medina, both are included in this, territory, in this category. And actually hypocrites were also people under the influence of the Jews of Medina. They were under their influence. And they were the shayateen, people which we shall very presently read in, the, in, the, these, in these ayat also the word. So actually this description, as you say in English, free to whom it fits. This is a narration and it fits two groups of people of that time. Number one, the Jews. Number two, the Munafiqun, the hypocrites, who said they were Muslims, and but they were not Muslims, they were not Mormons. Why Jews? Because here you find Yaqulu amanna billahi wa bil akhir. Not bil rasul. Here the wordings are only that they say we believe in Allah and believe in hereafter. But not in the rasul. We don't believe in the messenger. At least this is not their saying. And that was the position of the Jews. Because we believe in Allah. And you, you also believe in Allah. We also believe in Allah. You also believe in unity of Allah. We also believe in unity of Allah. You also believe in the resurrection. We also believe in the resurrection. You also believe in the in the hereafter, in the heaven and hell. We also believe in the hereafter and the hell and the heaven. So we are also Mormons. You must accept us as believers. That was their claim, and it's very noteworthy that out of the three basic imaniyat, three basic themes of iman, only two have been mentioned. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ they are not Mormons. And in the same way, and when we shall read the description, this is this fits, you know, the Munafiqun of Medina also. Because they also actually, they doubted about the messengership of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We find in the Quran at different places that they said, for example, why these, these wars have been started, battles have been started. There is no express injunction in the Quran. Lawla nuzirat suratun. Why not a surah has been, has been revealed in the Qur'an? And only on this demand of theirs, we find that Surah Al-Qital was revealed. Surah Al-Muhammad or Surah Al-Qital in the 26th part, which contains a very express injunction for going to war against the kuffar. So actually, they were not very sure about the messengership or prophethood of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were also, also they, they, their claim was, Iman Billah, Iman Bil Akhir. Actually, they took Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not very seriously. And to obey Muhammad personally, that had become most difficult for them. So these both groups are included here. If you keep in view the Taweelul Khas, the groups who are in the background of these ayat. But when we shall infer generally, this will fit every Munafiq for all times to come. Because, as a rule, please understand, whenever there is some ideological call, when there is some revolutionary movement started based on some ideology, you will always find three types of people. There are people who accept the ideology at its face value, and then they are ready to die for it, live for it, to do whatever it demands. Then there are people who are opposed to that ideology. They oppose it clearly, openly, tooth and nail. And then there is the third group always, who want to support the ideology, but keep safe themselves. They want to play safe. They, want, they don't want to sacrifice their, their belongings or their lives. They want to be safe. 
and you know, to be, to keep their money with them. And everything you say, they, they, they don't want to take risks. And they actually, they want to do something good. But it should happen itself. Not that, that we have to do anything for it, and we have to sacrifice anything for it. So these are the munafiqun, the third type of people, who will always be found with every ideological movement, every revolutionary movement, people who believe it, take it at its face value, they plunge into deep waters, risking everything. People who refuse to accept and who oppose it to the nail, clearly. And people who are in between. La ilaha ulai wa la ilaha ulai. They are neither on that side, neither on this side. They are somewhat on this side, somewhat on that side. Meaning thereby, neither on that side, neither on this side. So these are the munafiqun, and this is the third group which is being discussed here. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And they are not believers, they are not the real moments. يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا They try to, th to deceive. يُخَادِعُونَ I have added the word try. They are trying to deceive Allah and the people who believe, the real believers. مُخَادَعَةً This is Baba Mufala. This is trying against each other. So يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا They are trying to deceive Allah and people who believe, the Mormons. وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ And they are not deceiving anybody except themselves. They are deceiving themselves. When they claim they are Mormon, they are deceiving themselves. When they think that they can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this verbal attestation only, when they are wrong, they are deceiving themselves. وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ But they perceive it not. They have not the sense that they are deceiving themselves. وَلَا يَشْعُرُونَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ In their hearts, there is a disease. There is an ailment. That ailment is of doubt. Shak, rab, doubt. And this is actually, this shak and rab, then it goes to develop into nifaq, into hypocrisy. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has increased them in their disease. This is the rule of Allah. This is the sunnah of Allah. This is the habit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take to the right path, He will help you in proceeding forward on that right path. If you choose the wrong path, He will help you. Go ahead. Further and further. And if you are in between, He will leave you there. It's your own choice. Imma shakiram wa imma kafura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the choice to you, to me, to every human being. When the decision he makes, Allah makes that way easy for him to proceed further and further. All the difficulties of the right path, they are made easier for him. All the big evils of the wrong path, for those people who choose to, to take, take that wrong path for themselves, then they are made easy for him when they go after one big evil to the another bigger evil and then to the still bigger evil, they go forward. So actually this is the habit of Allah. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا Allah has increased them in their disease. وَلَهُمْ عَزَابٌ عَلِيمٌ And for them is a very painful torment. بِمَا كَانُوا يَقْسِبُونَ On the basis of, because of the lie that they had been telling. Because they were saying we are Mormons, they were not Mormons. This was the the lie that they were saying, they were telling. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسَدُوا فِي الْلَرْضِ Now it's very important. This third category of people, as I told you, one type of people who accept that dawah, that call, that ideology, and then they plunge into deep waters, risking everything. Other one, they have rejected the ideology, rather they have decided to oppose it, and they are opposing it to the nail. And then this third group is in between. They want to make peace between evil and good, between batil and haq. They want to make peace between them. Because if there is a clash between the batil and the haq, between the truth and the falsehood, if there is a clash, there is going to be bloodshed, there is going to be loss of life, loss of property, loss of conveniences, everything. So actually they want peace, not for the sake of the truth, 
but for themselves, to save themselves. That is why they used, they wanted to say, that why are we going to war? It's no use going to war against Kuffar. Why not go on preaching and preaching and teaching and teaching? Well, we can, we can teach Islam. We can teach Islam to the people. Why Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taken this way? He has sending, he started sending small groups of armies, small groups, obstructing the way of the caravans, of the Quraysh. What for? Why? This will lead to bloodshed. This will lead to war, to battles. We don't, we shouldn't do it. We should make peace. Now you, this, this, this character, you must read between the lines. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ When it is said to them, don't make mischief on the earth. They say, oh no, we are the peacemakers. What was the mischief? Muslims, the true Muslim said to them, if you have accepted Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the messenger of Allah, if you accepted Islam, then be true Muslims. Now obey him in every respect. When you have accepted him, now you have to obey him. Why you know this difference of opinion? This is actually mischief. This is fasad. La tu sadu fillar. There is a party. You are breaking the discipline of the party. This party must be disciplined. Bunyanu marsus. Inna Allah yuhibbul lazina yuqatiluna fi sabilihi saffan kandahum bunyanu marsus. You should be like, you know, a fortified wall. Not, not different people, individuals, you know. So this group should be very much integrated. And why are you making this facade? And they, the reply was, Qalu innama nahnu muslihoon. No, we want to make peace. Muhammad wants to make war, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we want to obstruct this war mongering. We want to have peace. Allah innahum humul mufsidun. Now this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen, they are the mischief mongers. But they don't have the perception, they perceive not. But they are the mischief mongers. Why? Because actually, whenever on this earth there is some system which is not the system of Deen of Allah, this is fasad. Although there might be all amn, all peace, apparent peace, but actually when this is not the law of Allah which is governing this place, it is in rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is fasad. Zahar al-fasadu fil barre wal bahar. Bima kasabat yadin nas. This is fasad. This is rebellion against the rightful ruler. The rightful owner of this universe is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the only rightful ruler. And if anybody else, any other law is ruling, it is rebellion. So this rebellion has to be set under. It has to be controlled. It has to be dealt with. And for dealing with this rebellion, putting it down, you need a party, strong party, powerful party, disciplined party. Now if you are, if you are giving, making injuries to the discipline of that party, you are weakening that party, you are, you are abetting this system actually, this facade. So Quran says, Allah in the humble mufsidun. By breaking the discipline of the Muslim party, of Hezbollah, of the party of Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are actually, they are the mischief mongers, they are abetting and supporting this facade on earth. Allah in the hum humul musseduna walakin la yashurun. Waida kila lahum aminu kama man nas. And when it is said to them, you should also believe just as the others have believed. You look to Abu Bakr, look to Omar, look to Saad ibn Ma'az, look to Saad ibn Abada, razi Allah ta'ala anu majma'in. They are the believers. Why don't you follow them? Why don't you take to their examples? What did they say? Very interesting. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ قَالُوا أَنُومِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ السُّفَحَا They said, should we believe just as these fools are believing? They thought they are fools. They are fanatics. They are risking everything. These are fools who have left their homes and hearts and they have come over from Makkah to Medina. Are they, are they, you know, wise people? They don't look to whatever is injurious to them, whatever is harmful to them, whatever is beneficial for them. They have just migrated from Makkah, leaving their families, their home, not only their homes and hearts, their families, 
at the mercy of the wolves of Makkah. They have come over here, and they are fools. Actually, we are not fools like them. We are not going to risk our lives and properties and our wealth. We are not going to, that, to take that part. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ السُّفَا آمَنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ قَالُوا وَنُؤْمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ السُّفَهَا أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ السُّفَهَا وَلَاكِ اللَّا يَعْلَمُونَ Listen to it. Harkan. They are the fools, but they don't have the perception. They don't have the knowledge. Abu Bakr is not a fool. Omar is not a fool. And Saad ibn Ibadah and Saad ibn Maaz, they are not fools. These are fools. Ubay, Abdullah ibn Ubay, is the biggest fool of Medina. And the people who are like him, people who are obeying him, people who are taking his part, they are the fools. Because actually they don't know what is really good and beneficial for them. Because real life is the life hereafter. And this is injurious for them. Because we read in Surah Al-Nisa, إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ These munafiqeen will be in the lowest part of hell, in the lowest section of hell. They will be placed. So actually, they are fools. وَإِذَا لَقُلْ لَذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا And when they meet the people who believe, really believe, they say, we also believe. وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينَهِمْ Now this is a word, please note. When they are in privacy with their devils, with their chiefs, well, these are the chiefs, the, the Jews of Medina. The Munafiqeen were actually, they were in close liaison with the Jews of Medina. There they say, we are with you. Don't think. Although we have openly declared ourselves to be Muslims, to be with the Muslims, to be with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but this is also, we are making mockery of them. We are with you really. We, are, we have not left your side. We are with you. وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا عَكُمْ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَحْزِئُونَ We are only mocking. We are these fools, you know, these moments. They are fools. And we are making a laughing stock for them. اللَّهُ يَسْتَحْزِئُونَ Now this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah mocks at them. وَيَمُدُّهُمْ فِي تُغْيَانِهِمْ Again the same divine habit or divine rule. Or the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whichever path you take, Allah makes it easy for you. وَيَمُدُّهُمْ فِي تُغْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them increase in their wrongdoings. Permits them going more and more in the direction of that evil and wrong path that they have taken and decided and chosen for themselves. أُولَائِكَ الَّذِينَ اشْتَرَوْا أُولَائِكَ الَّذِينَ اشْتَرَوْا الضَّلَالَةَ بِالْخُدَى they are the people who have purchased error, falsehood, in exchange for guidance. Very beautiful words. Now guidance of the Qur'an came to them. Now they have two options. Either accept the guidance of the Qur'an, or the opposite of it, that's the falsehood, that is batil, that is error, that is sin, that is disobedience to Allah. Actually now, they have given away the guidance of Qur'an, guidance of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and taken for themselves, accepting for themselves, they have exchanged the guidance for zalala, for the error, the falsehood. فَمَا رَبِحَتْ تِجَارَتُهُمْ And this trade of theirs, it has not benefited them at all. This is the, the sort of... Tabsrah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A commentary from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulaika al-lazeen ashtaramu zalalata bil huda fama rabihat tijaratahu wa ma kaanu muhtadeen and they are not going to reach the destiny. They cannot have now the guidance because they have gone very far on this path of nifaq and munafika. Masaluhum ka masal al-lazi stawqada nara. Now there are two similes here. And there are two opinions. One opinion is that the, both these similes are regarding this third category. The in-between people. Neither this side nor this side. La ilaha ulai wa la ilaha ulai. Muzab zabina bayna zalik. Neither the believers nor opposing apparently or openly. In-between. 
and the both the you know parables or both this these uh, similitudes they are about these very people some are very deep in this quality of of uh, hypocrisy and some are shallow but the opinion which i hold and i agree with the people who think that way that is that the first simile is for the kuffar and the second simile is for the munafiqeen for the kuffar we read these ayat inna allazina kafaru sawaun alayhim ma anzartahum am lam tunzirum la yu'minun khatam allahu ala qulubihim wa ala sam'ihim wa ala absarihim ghishawa wa lahum adhabun azim for them now there is a misal a simile a similitude masaluhum ka masal alladhi istawqada nara their likenesses as the likeness of one who kindled a fire now this is actually a situation which you can imagine it commonly happened to the arab people when they used to travel in the desert now a caravan is traveling during the night and they used to travel during the night mostly because the days were very hot one couldn't take you know to travel in the, in the day time so during the night and it did some time happen that they lost the way now they are lost where we are in darkness and in that darkness somebody takes the courage gathers some timber and then you know kindles a fire now they can see where they are they were about where are we but at this moment something happens to a group of people that their sight is gone so they are again in the darkness before that fire there was darkness outside although their own sights were intact but now the mahol the environment the surroundings are enlightened but their sight is gone so they are again in the darkness this is the position of those actually muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam kindled the fire and light of hidayah but there were certain peoples who out of jealousy out of their haughtiness they didn't like to see the light of the day so actually their their sight was was taken away by allah subhanahu wa taala and now they are groping in the darkness summun bukmun umyun fahum la yarjiun this is the likeness of the people of the second group in the ladina kafaru sabaun alayhi ma anzartahum am lam tunzirum la yu'minun khatam allah ala qulubihim wa ala sam'ihim wa ala absarihim bishawa wa lahum azabun azim masaluhum kama masal alladhi istawqada nara their likeness is to the likeness of a one person who kindled a fire falamma awat ma hawlahu and when it lighted all around him zahab allah bi nurihim allah took away their sights wa tarakahum fi zulumatil la yubsirun and now left them in the darknesses they cannot see anything summun bukmun umyun fahum la yarjiun they are deaf they are dumb they are blind and they are not going to return they cannot return don't hope oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or you oh muslims that any one of them will ever return to the path of allah because now allah subhanahu wa taala has taken away their sights khatam allah ala qulubihi wa ala sami wa ala tarim bishawa so i think that this simile is for that group and for the munafiqeen of second simile aw kasayyib min as sama or the similitude of a rain storm free his zulumatun wa radu wa barq there is a rain storm from the star, from the sky wherein there is darkness and thunder and lightning yaj'aluna asabi'ahum fi azanihim min as-sawa'iq hadar al-mawt they are putting their fingers in their ears saving themselves from death due to the stunning thunder clap they think that this sound will take it is their hearing away and then maybe they die out of it qasayyib min as-sama'i fi dhulumatun wa radu wa barq yajaluna asabihum fi adhanihim min as-sama'i hadar al-mawt wallahu muhitun bil kafirin and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already encompassed and encircled these kuffar where when where where can they go they are within the grip of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they can cannot go anywhere they cannot run away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqadul barq yakhtafu absarahum the lightning almost is near to snatch their sights 
Whenever there is some light, they can see something. The lightning, lightning for a time, for a moment, they have seen the environment, they start going in the direction. Mashafi, they, they walk a few steps. And when there is darkness upon them, they stand. And had Allah decided or decreed, He would have taken away from them their sight and hearing both. In Allah ala kulli shayin qadeer. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful. He has all authority. He can do anything He likes. Now just have some thought about this simile. You know, whenever there is some revolutionary dawah, revolutionary movement, there are difficulties. You are called to do your duties in face of difficulties and risks. There are risks of life, risks of wealth. Now you, you, may, be, you, you may have to suffer and you may have to give up your careers. You may have to give up and wind up your businesses because that is that has been the requirement of every revolutionary struggle. Now these people who are in between, they are belonging to the category who want to do something but without any harm to themselves. They don't want to take any risk to their life, their wealth, their property and so on. So what happens whenever during the movement there, are, there comes a time when there is no immediate risk. There is no call to go to war, for example, during the Madani period. Whenever there was a call to go to war for any battle, then they were, you know, in a very big trouble. How to save themselves? What, you know, how to apologize? How to get leave from that? But whenever there is all the conditions are normal, nothing very risky affair, then they can, you know, walk with the Muslims. We are also Muslims. And they, they join the Muslims in congregations. They talk loudly about their Islam and Iman. They, take, they make tall claims about their sincerity. But when there is a difficult time, time of trial and tribulation, then you know they go down and their courage is gone. So that is the condition portrayed in this similitude. That whenever there is some light, they see something, they can go. They, they take a few steps. They go ahead. But then again, when there is darkness, there is again difficulty, there is again risk for life or property or wealth, they again stand and they don't move. So this is the condition of those people about whom the description we have already seen. They are from among peoples who claim that they are Mormons, they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they believe in the life hereafter, in the day of judgment, but actually they don't believe. It's a superficial claim that they are making. It's only a verbal attestation that they are doing, or they are making a total false claim, they are like the Jews. So this description fits both of them. And they were in close association with each other. Actually, this munafiqat and you know munafiqeen they were like an undergrowth you know there are big trees tall trees under those big trees there is the undergrowth which we call bushes so these munafiqeen were like the undergrowth of the Jews they were the established people three established tribes they were very influential they were very wealthy they were you know educated people they had the book they had the law they had the they had Torah they had people, learned people within them. So actually this Munafiqeen, this third category was an undergrowth under, under that Jews. And this is the description of this character. And when we generalize it, always with every revolutionary call and movement, you will find three types of people. People who accept the call at its face value. And then they die for it, they live for it. They take every risk for it. They are ready to sacrifice their all belongings, even their lives. People who are opposed to it, tooth and nail, openly, because they are the people whose vested interests are threatened by the revolutionary party or the revolutionary dawah. They oppose it tooth and nail. 
and there is always a third group which likes that something good should happen. But they are not ready to sacrifice anything for that. They want to play safe, to keep safe. There is a very important and very beautiful similitude in Suratul Hajj also. I told you Suratul Hajj, you know, that is in between Makki and Madani Surahs. In Suratul Hajj there is an ayah, وَمِنَ nas مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ harfin. There are from among people who want to worship Allah, but keeping, them, keeping themselves on the sides. They don't want to plunge the main current. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ فَإِنْ أَسَابَهُ خَيْرٌ اِتْمَعَنَّ بِهِ If there is khair, if there is safety, if there is, you know, all the sureties and everything is okay, اِتْمَعَنَّ بِهِ He is also satisfied. He is also going along with the Mu'mineen. وَإِنَ سَابَتُ فِتْنَةُ لِنْقَلَبَ عَلَىٰ وَجْهِهِ And whenever there is some trial, tribulation, when there is a period of testing, when there is a call for sacrifice, for spending for the cause of Allah, a call for going to the battlefield for the cause of Allah, اِنْقَلَبَ عَلَىٰ وَجْهِهِ They fall down on their faces, fall down on the ground on their faces. خَسَرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ this is actually the real loss, loss of this world also, and real loss of the Akhirah. ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ And this is the real loss, this is the real danger to which a man is putting himself. So that is actually the description of this. And I think the time is also over. No? Oh, two minutes. Let us proceed to the first ayah of the third section. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ عَبُدُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Instead of giving you the translation, let me give you the introduction to the third and fourth sections. These two sections of this surah, as I told you in the beginning, they give you a gist and a summary of number one, the call of Qur'an. What's the call of Qur'an? Number one. And number two, the basic philosophy of Qur'an. All these subjects have been discussed in detail in the Makki surahs. But you know, as I told you, that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a Madani surah in the very beginning of the Mus'haf, the gist and summary of that Makki Qur'an is given here in two sections. Very important. What's the basic call of Qur'an? That we will find in the third section, third ruku. What's the basic philosophy of Qur'an? What's the position of man in this universe? On what basis that position has been given to him? And what is the struggle of between evil and good that is going on throughout the history? The struggle within a man, within the personality. There is a struggle always going on within our personalities between good and evil. Something is taking us towards evil and something wants to take us towards good, towards virtue. This is a struggle. A war is going on in the inner, you know, battlefield of our personalities. And then there is a war going on on the outside world. There is the philosophy of history of Quran that this is a struggle between the forces of evil and forces of virtue and good. There is the forces of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on one side and the forces of shaitan on the other side. Dunya ko hai phir maar ka hai badan pesh. Iblis ne phir apne darindon ko ubhara. اللہ کو پابر دیئے مومن پہ بھروسہ ابلویس کو یورپ کی مشینوں کا سہارا تو that struggle is going on ستیزہ کار رہا ہے ازل سے تائم روز چراغ مصطفیوی سے شرار بولہ بھی that struggle has been going on but what is the basis of that struggle that will be discussed in the fourth section انشاءاللہ and that those two sections انشاءاللہ we shall study in the next session بارک اللہ علی و لکم فی القرآن العظیم و نفانی و ایاکم بالآیات و ذکر الحکیم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. 
A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.